In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by the Australian Sports Sedan Association and the Grunt Performance Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. So today we're going to try and track down Max Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo of course, um, Esteban Ocon, Sergio Perez and I think a couple more. It all sort of happens in one, one massive tidal wave of media events and they're always usually about sort of, you know, Formula One drivers doing stuff that Formula One drivers normally don't, cheers, normally don't do. Yeah, lots of, you know, like, lots of kissing footballs and kicking babies and all that sort of, you know, me, mainstream media-friendly stuff. So, I think we've got some, uh, I think we've got some art happening, some street art, because that street art's very trendy in Melbourne, of course. Um, the, the tennis, we've got no football this year, they're playing this year, the sport of choice is tennis, and golf. That's the other one they're playing as well, is golf. So, um, highly exciting media opportunities for the, uh, for the Formula One drivers and for us to point pictures at. What we're hoping for, of course, is to get the opportunity to have a one-to-one -one chat with them or even in a media scrum. But what it does mean is last night we did a, an episode of In Pit Lane. By the time that I'd got it all together and uploaded it to Channel 31, it was the best part of half past three before I went to bed. It's now, um, what time is it, about 7, 7.25 in the morning. And I'm about to head off and pick up Eva, who's going to help me out today. And um, we thought we'd just you know, send you, basically drag you around with us and show you what happens on one of these things, one of these media uh, media safaris. So anyway, I hope you enjoy it. It's a bit of a different program tonight, but uh, hope you enjoy it. Hang on for the ride. It could get bumpy. Cheers. Okay, we've got the first problem of the day. We've turned up and there's, there's some missing equipment, so some of the plans have had to change. So I'm hoping you're hearing us now because the missing equipment is, of course, audio. It's always audio. We're going to head up now to Hosier Lane. Dan Ricardo and Max Verstappen are supposedly up there. Um, whether we get there in time is going to be the next big, uh, the next big question. So, um, so stay tuned. Let's head up to uh, see if we can catch up with... Uh, this is Eve, by the way. Eve, there, there she is. Say hi. I am helping today. Eve is helping today. Eve is helping today. We will find. We will. We will judge that at the end of the day. I'm going to use my smile so they forgive us when we trip them with the cords. With the yes, because the radio mic isn't working. It's a long story. Look, we'll we'll get back we'll to you. Back. Laneway filled to the brim with local and international media, rabid Formula One fans, various PR types, security, two $300,000 supercars and a few confused tourists, Hosier Lane was always going to be hectic. Oops. 
the brief this morning to deface two Aston Martins with the assistance of local street artist Julian Clavaggio. <laughs> totally flattered, totally stoked and honoured to, to be given this massive responsibility and task to get into, into painting his, their helmets onto an Aston Martin DB11. So it's pretty much a reinterpretation of what their own helmets are, Danny's and Max's helmets. So we just pretty much place different areas of the helmets onto the car. So it's just a re-communication of what it is and a little bit of artistic input as well. Amid the throng of indifferent local media, only there because there was an Australian involved, and the desperate and slightly deranged international Formula One media, whose job it is to fill hundreds of hours of dedicated programming with a sport that isn't anywhere near as big, important or exciting as it likes to think it is, it was always going to be an exercise in slightly less than organised chaos. Australia's own Dan Ricardo took it all with his usual good humour, and of course, that trademark smile. I didn't think I'd be ruining a quarter of a million dollar car or, or whatever it is in Oz here, but uh, yeah, uh, look, it's all right. I, I want to I wanna say it's better than Max's. I don't know, I feel like this was the first year that I've actually kind of got bored in the off season and, and in terms of it just felt like we were waiting so long to get the season started that there were some days I was I don't know, it's like still two months out for the first race and you're training and you're beating yourself up and you're like, still two months away. Like, uh, I don't know, just, uh, yeah, I was kind of, I felt like the break was too long. So I'm happy to be here, happy to go racing. Melbourne's an awesome, awesome city. Uh, I, I definitely want to come back away from race week so I get some time to really see it as a, I guess as a tourist or a local, however you want to say it. Um, but it's really cool, sporting capital of Australia. Mum and Dad will fly in and uh, then I've got a few mates coming as well. So yeah, um, there's a few Red Bull, Red Bull mates as well, Red Bull athletes that are coming down, so should be good. Max Verstappen? Well, perhaps not quite as enthusiastic as his Aussie teammate. We are trying to act like artists, even though we are absolutely untalented, but uh, yeah. After a whirlwind round of answering questions covering everything from the halo, new tyre compounds and Daniel's plans for next season, yes this season hadn't even begun, through to where do you get the best hamburger in Melbourne, who's your favourite comedian and the inevitable who do you barrack for in the footy, it was all over and Hosier Lane returned to its faux bohemian ambience leaving behind some very confused hipsters and a little extra graffiti to remind them all of the day that Formula One came to town. Whatever the hell Formula One is. Cut and feel the power, the gods of thunder roar again with the grunt performance Victorian Sportsland Championship. Round two, Phillip Island, May 5th and 6th. For more details, www.sportsland.com.au. for me to be out of the sling and be able to sort of fire a, fire a few serves down at them but now nah, they had a good time and they got out here and I think it's nice maybe for them to get out of the car and do something a little bit different while they're here in Melbourne. If I think what they do is probably a little more dangerous and uh, a little less margin for error than us as tennis players but uh, you know you talk about how fast they go in a you know F1 car and you know they're surprised by how fast you can serve but I think what they do is uh, it's pretty special. I think these are important events, um, you know, just for the city. Um, we saw how big the Australian Open is every year and how much it's growing. And for me, I've never had the chance to go down to Owl Park and watch the Grand Prix. I'm always overseas travelling this time of year. So, you know, I'm going to get to see what that's like and, you know, heading to the, the glamour on the grid and then to the race on Sunday. So I'm looking forward to doing it. But I think it's also awesome for the city. And, you know, Melbourne is the most livable city in the world for a reason. And for me being back here now, it's, it's great to be a part of that. 
tennis clearly isn't Mr. Perez's sport of choice. In fact, this was his first time on court. I've never played tennis, basically. It's my first time. I really like the sport and uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be, to be here in Melbourne and learning about uh, such a, a good tennis player. Mr. Perez is clearly a lot more at home in his Force India racing car and he's looking forward to the upcoming year of Grand Prix type racing with a great deal of enthusiasm. I feel that plenty of hope for this one. I think it's going to be a very challenging year. Uh, you got obviously a lot of competition in the midfield but I hope we also close the gap to the top runners. So I'm very optimistic for this year and, and looking forward to, to have a very strong year. In terms of pressure, you're always working at your maximum, you know, uh, with whatever car you have. Uh, I'm aware that the com competition is going to be really, really tight, especially in, in that midfield pack. But uh, I, I always say, you know, that it doesn't really matter where, where you start in, in Melbourne, it's where you finish in Abu Dhabi. It's a long season, so plenty of hope, plenty of opportunity this year, and, and I believe that the good things are coming up. Uh, I'm really optimistic for this year. I, I really hope after testing that uh, we identify our, our points to work on. So I, I really think that we can be in a good shape. I think this year is going to be more uh, looking after the tires um, uh, with hot tracks, etc. I think probably it might, we might have a, a bit more of a, of a tire issue. Uh, also, the tires are new, so it's plenty of things to learn about the tires. So hopefully, it can be a good advantage for me. Yeah, we had a couple of, of incidents last year. I think we we've learned. We came out of on top of that with the team, and uh, towards the end of the year, there was good atmosphere. We were working well together, and I think that's a, the priority for us. You know, we're gonna be really competitive, very close, uh, very much the whole season. But uh, the most important is that we push the team forward, especially now that the competition is really high. Mr. Ocon is a lover of tennis. In fact, the chance to play at the home of the Grand Slam Australian tournament filled the young Frenchman with Le Bonheur, as they say in Paris. And coming in, in Melbourne and, you know, playing where the Australian Open take place, it, it's awesome, you know, we don't have uh, much, uh, much occasion to do that so uh, you know coming and do that here it's just uh, just awesome and you can feel you know it's a, it's an awesome place these sort of days i mean you're going to be doing this we get it once a year where you and the other drivers are running around doing all these media stunts you do it every single grand prix do you ever get tired of this sort of thing no it's part of the job you know uh, i've been working all my life to be formula one driver you can't complain of doing a bit of media or a bit of interviews you know it's uh, it's part of it uh, so uh, so no i'm happy to do it so have you had the opportunity to go down and have a look at the track and have a walk around the track as yet or is that uh, to be done tomorrow? No, it will be, it will be done uh, this afternoon actually. So we are taking uh, the track walk uh, again, you know, because we did it last year already, but we do it at every Grand Prix, so we do it uh, later in the afternoon. So what are your impressions of the circuit? Uh, for a street circuit it's rather unusual, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a street circuit, but with a bit of more open space, you know, so it's not totally a street circuit, but uh, yeah, it's a great place, you know, it's really tough, a uh, lot of technical corners, uh, you can't make a mistake, if you, if you make a mistake, you go straight off, so, uh, so no, it's a, it's a place I enjoy to be. The team has been on the verge of you know, breaking through for a major success for the last couple of years, every year people say this year it's going to be, you're going to take the next step, are you confident that this year you are going to take that next step and be up there with people, not, perhaps not even with Mercedes but at least with people like Red Bull and those sort of teams? Um, you know, our target is to is to get uh, force in the championship again, get closer to the top three teams. So yeah, that's where we want to be. Uh, of course, we know there's going to be a lot of people uh, coming close to us. Um, but you know, as for Cindy, as surprise many, many years, I think we can do it once again. Well, so just quickly after the test, you've had the opportunity to drive the car with the halo. What are your opinions of it? Did you find it uh, a bit of a challenge? Um, you, you need to get used to it, uh, for sure, um, but you know, uh, as a safety device, there's nothing better, so, uh, um, and you know, at the end it was transparent for me, so, uh, so no, no big issues. Is that the case, you just sort of, you, know, you just put it out of your mind and just get on with the racing and you don't even notice it after a couple of laps? Yeah, that's, that's what you need to do, and there's nothing else you can do. Okay, well good luck for both Albert Park and the rest of the year for now. Thanks for joining us in pit lane. Thank you very much. Thanks. With no Australian involvement and with the daily news deadlines looming, the ranks of the media pack had thinned out considerably. But our long day wasn't yet over. There were more photos to take, more people to talk to, 
and hopefully someone will feed us. Along Nine Iron away from the Melbourne Tennis Centre is the Burnley Public Golf Course. This was the site of the day's final media extravaganza. The formula here was the usual fish out of water scenario. Formula One drivers trying and failing to play real sports. Oh, it's all very amusing for the mainstream media, most of whom still don't think that motorsport is a true sport, but clearly in this case, Carlos Sainz didn't read the script. You see, it turns out that young Carlos is actually quite a good golfer. In fact, away from the high-speed pressure world of Formula One, it's his relaxation of choice. Nico Hulkenberg also failed to read the script and decided that apart from being an occasional comedy relief to his teammate, he'd just sit out the whole golf thing, citing a bad back as the excuse. So with no golf to talk about, we talked about Formula One instead. Nico, you are looking for the form from testing. I mean, how do you approach testing nowadays? It looks like everybody's got a different approach. Do you think that uh, some teams take it more more seriously than others, or uh, do you think everybody is? Uh, how did you approach it? No, everybody approaches it, you know, seriously. But of course, there's different different methods and and different you know uh, programs for different teams. So I think that that's what you mean. But um, everybody obviously is preparing as much as they can. How much pressure is on a team like Renault, a major company like that, and the performance hasn't been quite what you would have expected? How much pressure is on you guys this year and into the future? Well, I disagree with that. I think last year we, we did pretty all right. You know, if you consider when the when the team is back, it's since a factory team, and what we've done at the, the back end of last year, that was pretty decent and pretty much on, on schedule for what we want to achieve. And I think that's the target for this year as well. We want to, you know, uh, start performing where we left things off end of last year and then, you know, keep building on, on that. The feedback from the testing from a lot of people who observe us is that there's been a lot of very uh, fine aero work done there. What difference do you feel and do you think you're going to have in the car this year from last year? Well, it's just about, you know, getting the balance right, but it's always about finding, you know, obviously the, the more more load, more dynamic downforce, um, but there's a balance, you know, with drag and with other things. Barcelona is very hard to tell now because the, the track was resurfaced, so that changed the, the, the phase and the, the characteristic of the track quite a lot, so hard to, to judge for sure, but, um, you know, the car has definitely developed and, and moved on aerodynamically. Forecasts for a bit of rain over the weekend, uh, would that worry you at all? No, not at all. I think uh, I'm always, you know, a fan of, of mixed conditions or even wet weather. Um, I quite like those those uh, tricky conditions, so I'm open for anything. Okay, best of luck. Thankfully, at the end of the day, there was food. I mean, Renault's a French company, and what's any gathering without good food? Unfortunately, the local European wasps also found the offering truly delicious, and few in the media pack were prepared to argue about ownership with them. But thanks anyway, Renault. At least it looked damn good. That's our end of our day. We've been chasing Formula One drivers all around Melbourne um, and we thought you'd come along for the ride. It wasn't, um, I don't know how successful we were or other. We had some technical problems, as is usual. Technical problems brought about mainly by not having enough money to get the latest G Wiz stuff. Isn't it funny you can get you know, stuff that is, you know, like fits in a box that big, costs nothing, and something that is that big, it would you know, make life so much easier, costs more money than we can afford. But, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. So, um, so from me and from uh, from Eva, Phil, Eva and Phil, and Phil we'll uh, we'll say farewell, and we'll see you next week back in the studio for a uh, for a more regular edition of In Bit Lane. Until then, au revoir. Bye. Something about the hours in the evening How time it moves so slowly through the night Like how the darkness creeps into my pretty love song When night is dark, just as long as day is bright I've got enough to fill my cup and to keep me moving Got some more to see me through another day And I am grateful to all the people Who've shown me love along the way Still I'm afraid I cannot say I did things my way My regrets, they all cast shadows in my mind 
tomorrow is a chance for a new day If only I could leave my yesterdays behind That a soul can send my road has all been easy But just as hard for those who've walked this road before I'm just trying to keep my eye on the horizon And to keep my spirit free from keeping score Still I can't turn my back on the truth that does surround me even when I make believe it isn't there Just like the sun, it wraps its loving arms around me The leaves me shivering in the evening air I'm afraid I cannot say I did things my way My regrets, they all cast shadows in my mind I know tomorrow is a chance for a new day As soon as I can leave my yesterdays behind I'm afraid I cannot say I did things my way My regrets, they all cast shadows in my mind I know tomorrow is a chance for a new day As soon as I can leave my yesterdays behind